My name is Steve Muse. Uh, I'm a solutions architect. I work in the solutions engineering team, and I focus specifically working with service providers. So what I want to talk to you today about is Kentix's capability to uh, observe content delivery and over-the-top services specifically for service providers. So the one thing that all service providers have in common uh, across any network, whether that be a transit network or an access network, is that they have lots and lots of traffic they have to deal with. Um, uh, I guarantee that in any service provider that you talk to, there is at least a person or a team worth of people who deal with just managing traffic. So that's capacity planning, uh, traffic engineering, dealing with peering, getting the onboard and off-ramp of that traffic onto the network. So the problem is, is that, you know, historically we, we've had a very network centric approach to this, but we have to answer these basic questions. You know, where's this traffic coming from? We need observability. We need to understand the where's and wh where it's going to, how is the performance, you know, how are these services actually being delivered? But historically we've had a very network centric approach to dealing with this traffic. We've always been looking at, you know, transit providers and peers and, and AS path information and source ASNs, right? So the focus has always been about sort of the BGP layer, you know, like understanding, you know, how this provider gets to me and so forth. But the reality is, in today's world, it's all about services. It, it's so much less about networks these days. It's really about the services that are riding on top of the network. And a perfect example of that is, is the outage, the very famous outage from last fall, like, Nobody remembered that AS32934 had an outage. Nobody knows what that really means on a broad scale, but everybody, and I mean everybody, knew that Facebook had a major outage, right? It's really, we've, we've, got, we've gone from a very network-centric view to a very service-oriented view. But the problem is, is that the tools that we've had to work with um, have been somewhat limited. You know, effectively, the only two ways we've been able to deal with this from a, from a network perspective has been with legacy NetFlow tools and other tools like deep packet inspection. So if we kind of drill into those particular, um, you know, solutions to understand your traffic flow, you know, the traditional network NetFlow tools that we've had available to us have been sort of old old school. They, they really don't provide much contextualization. You know, what CDN did it come from? What network delivered this traffic to me? Um, you know, typically they've been delivered over, uh, you know, legacy database connections, which are very, very slow when dealing with very huge volumes of telemetry, right? And by the time, <laughs> when I, previous to working at Kentech, I worked for a very large uh, cable operator and, and quite often I had a VP coming into my office saying, hey, look, I've got a meeting with, uh, you know, insert large content delivery network in five minutes, I need to, to get some traffic stats for them. Uh, and I'd be like, yeah, sorry, no way. Somebody just did a query ahead of you and, and it's gonna be an hour before I get my queries back. So so this legacy approach to handling um, to, uh, NetFlow and other telemetry at a very large scale. And as uh, Avi alluded to in his introduction, you know, they've always had this concept of sort of managed objects or having to understand what specific aspects of the telemetry that you wanted to save to be able to query against. They didn't have a take all approach, right? So, and, you know, so between man, uh, managed objects and data cubes, like having to kind of know what you, questions you're going to ask in the future so that you can, you know, start collecting that telemetry, you know, rather than taking a, a big data approach to the problem and just collecting everything as much as possible. And at the end of the day, the NetFlow tools that we've had available to us aren't necessarily the right uh, tools for the ops teams. You know, the service provider ops teams tend to have a very uh, uh, infrastructure centric view of the network. They really care about routers and interfaces and the BGP aspects of it, right? And a lot of the uh, existing and previous NetFlow tools available to us just really didn't have that data. So, the other tool sets that we've had available to us are DPI, deep packet inspection, right? The question is, is that really the right fit for the service provider operations teams, right? Now they give you an incredible level of detail of what's happening on the application floor, right? They're very application centric, but they don't really understand the infrastructure at a very large high level view, right? Uh, they're extremely capital intensive, right? We have taps to deal with distribution collectors, and in today's financial constraints and also uh, in the today's supply chain, you know, having to rely on this capital approach can, can be, you know, a risk. 
Um, they're very operationally expensive because uh, because the physical infrastructure needs manpower to kind of support um, that that physical infrastructure. And and again, like the legacy NetFlow tools, it's not it's not necessarily the right data for the operations teams for the service providers. You know, the example I use here on the screen is that it might be useful to know that the average bit rate for Xbox Live is 1.3 megabits per second or something like that. But how did that traffic get onto my network? Like, I it, that that's that's a data point, but does, is that going to help me solve a particular problem <clears throat> when I have help desk? folks calling me saying, hey, we're getting 100 phone calls saying that Xbox Live is, is, is a problem, right? Knowing the average bit rate is only a single data point doesn't necessarily help. So this is where Kentec comes into play. If you think about Kentec, we're uh, an observability platform. We take a very infrastructure centric approach to this, specifically for service providers. So in addition to the, the NetFlow data that we take in, all the additional SNMP metadata, which gives us the ability to classify the infrastructure's role in the in your network, right? So if I, I I can look at an individual interface and and first identify is that interface internal or an external interface? If it's an external interface, I can then identify it, it's a transit interface, uh, or it's a peer connection or a, an IX port, or if it's internal, it connects to my backbone or it connects to my data center. Or you know maybe so uh, uh, you know it's a host port. There's a bunch of hosts behind it or something like that. So having that, being able to tie the telemetry to the roles of the network is is a, a very big, uh, powerful uh, you know capability that will help us understand that. But also to add all these other data streams into you know SD WAN uh, information and what I'll talk about shortly is adding in uh, DNS telemetry, which gives us the ability to really um, tie all this telemetry back to individual services. So now what I'll do is I'll kind of go into a demo here. So if we start to think about historically, you know, going back, say, 20 years, how traffic got to service provider networks, uh, you know, back in the day, it was hosting networks. We had uh, all these companies that were uh, building these big data centers uh, and then hauling that traffic around here, there, and everywhere. Uh, it created lots of different problems, but um, back in, say, 1999, uh, companies like Akamai started to spring up and they had the idea of like, rather than keeping these big centralized hubs of all the data, let's start thinking about distributing uh, the content globally. Uh, so the CDN was born. And so over the course of the, say, last 20 plus years, we've seen the percentage of traffic moving from these hosting centers over to content delivery networks go from, you know, small percentages to now on the average um, service provider network likely that greater than 90% of all the traffic that is delivered to their networks is coming from a content delivery network. So that's that when you, and when you think about that, that's a pretty amazing set of statistics that such a large volume of network is coming from a relatively small number of uh, uh, source mechanism, delivery mechanisms, right? And that 10% is sort of like everything else. It's the you know, the random things out on the, there in the internet. Um, so if we come here into the Kentic interface and we look at our, our CDN analytic capability, what we're trying to do is take a, 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 an understanding of how content gets delivered. So we start with the CDN. In addition to the sort of standard de uh, telemetry streams that we get, if we add a, a, an additional telemetry stream, in this case, DNS data, so this would be customer facing DNS data. So the customers are requesting I want to go to apple.com and they get answers back from the DNS infrastructure. Kenta can take that DNS telemetry stream and start to tease apart what content delivery networks are actually delivering the end content. So we have a, a flow, a workflow like this that helps the service provider, number one, get a, a hold of how much traffic they have that's being delivered by content delivery networks, give you breakdowns by each of the content delivery networks so we can see uh, you know, how much traffic we're getting from them and, and full breakdowns there. But also what, what becomes uh, more important now too is to understand um, the performance of embedded caches that we have from these content delivery networks maybe in our network. So if you're a network of a certain size and you're talking to Netflix, Netflix will be interested in handing you a rack or a half a rack worth of uh, servers uh, to distribute, uh, you know, so that that content can get as close to the eyeballs as possible so they can get the best performance possible. So Kentic, under, because we have a very close uh, coupling with the infrastructure and understanding on a port level, 
what each port does. If we know that a port is connected to a set of caches that belong to Akamai or Netflix or Google or Facebook or somebody, we can look at that traffic from those ports and determine the, the effectiveness of those caches. Because in addition to that cache traffic you're getting, say for a CDN like Akamai, you're likely getting traffic from Akamai from every other port on your network or from many of your other ports on your network because Akamai has caches in everybody's network. So if you think about the problem that the, the service provider operations team has to deal with is they need to understand so they can capacity plan where the Akamai traffic comes from, right? So if we sort of drill into somebody and I'll pick on Akamai as an example, I've used them a few times already. What we can do is look at their traffic, drill into that one uh, uh, you know, content delivery network, understand what their traffic consists of in terms of all the different autonomous system numbers that they may use as far as what the internet sees, and then tell you how all that traffic globally gets to you by, you know, by an infrastructure view here. So we can see, you know, in this little fake network that we're going to examine in our demo environment here, I can see 8% of that traffic is being offloaded by the caches I have embedded in my network that Akamai has provided for us. But 83% of that traffic is coming from my customer ports. Maybe I'm a, in this case, maybe I'm a transit provider and I have a lot of service providers that are my sub customers, you know, tier two and threes, and they all have Akamai caches. So they're all feeding each other. So I can, I can give you that breakdown because we have the Kentic platform has that very tight coupling with your infrastructure. We understand the roles of all these boards. So this helps me because now I can see how that's delivered. And so if I kind of scroll down and see this, what we call a SAN key flow diagram, I can now understand because I have all this interface information and, and I understand the roles of all these ports, I can see that for all this Akamai traffic, a lot of it's coming customers, but a lot of it's also coming in from my transit ports. And, and then some from embedded caches and so forth and all the other types, you know, I exports and things like that. Now, this is helpful for these uh, service providers because transit ports means that I'm paying for that traffic, right? So if I have an agreement with a content delivery network to deliver that traffic to me settlement free, meaning that I'm not paying for that traffic and uh, I'm still getting traffic from that CDN uh, over ports that I have to pay for. That's costing me additional traffic. So what this does is it helps you understand where the traffic's coming from, which then can help you facilitate conversations with these networks to say, hey, um, could you potentially adjust your algorithm to deliver this traffic over these other, you know, IX ports or private peers or public peers or whatever, um, just ports that I'm not effectively paying for. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so that can really help you, A, understand how it gets delivered to you uh, and then allow you to help, then help troubleshoot uh, those particular connectivity issues and, you know, financial issues, right? Uh, is, sure. is it possible with Kentic to also get uh, details into like how that traffic is performing on this uh, similar breakdowns? So, like, can I see that traffic over these, you know, cash boxes is working really well, but, you know, the stuff coming over IX is maybe it's, oh, it's really saturated because of other reasons. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I don't go to, into a lot of detail on this in this particular presentation, but Kentic has a synthetic testing capability that rides on top of this platform that can basically utilize this information about content delivery networks to automate the provisioning of tests uh, at an automated fashion so that you can do exactly that. So if I look at this delivery mechanism or, or the delivery map for Akamai and, and I have traffic coming in over all these, uh, you know, types of ports, customer ports, transit ports, embedded cash ports, I can basically go into Kentic Synthetics and say, monitor Akamai, test to a whole bunch of endpoints automatically. I don't even have to tell it which IPs, it just will figure it out and then break it down by uh, how each of those are performing by those delivery types, whether it's embedded cache and so forth. And that gives me uh, latency packet loss jitter plus full path information as well on top of that. Um, yeah. You said that you might be testing to end IP addresses and things like that. Are those things that are set out in public you can grab to? Are those things you've set up f specifically for beaconing and things of that nature? Uh, so in the case of CDNs, it would be endpoint IPs, right? So what we do in that case is we utilize the flow database. So we say, if I, if I want to set up an automated test to Akamai, I tell it, I want to test to Akamai. We do a query on the flow layer 
it figures out all the different IPs that your traffic is sending to on the Akamai network for, or getting traffic from the Akamai network. And then we'll automate the provisioning of testing to those IP endpoints. It's very simple, high level testing. It's, you know, ping TCP, you know, port type of thing. So I was just trying to figure out how deep you went into, you know, building anything in the back end uh, for the testing side of it, or if you were using, you know, publicly available yeah. pieces. Yeah, we, it, whenever possible, we try to utilize the flow layer to inform and automate the creation of tests on the synthetic layer, which is a kind of a unique capability to Kenthic. One of the things I've I've seen in this area, you know, where you're not get using the caches properly relates to the way DNS is configured by the by the end customer. Are you able to identify the the reason they're going to the public ones rather than the the caches easily here, so we can hone in on those? Um, you know, so particularly at getting people to change their their DNS lookup so that they get to the right. Um, you know, the closest version you, of the CDN. You can, you can use Kentic flow data to, to examine traffic coming from your customer base, but that's, this workflow doesn't address that specific problem, but it, it gives you the output of like knowing that traffic's not going the right way effectively. All right. But I'm not able to confirm that that's the reason uh, or the right. reason for it going the wrong way. Not in an automated fashion. It would be a little bit of extra work to go into the flow layer and build some queries. But you could. We, you okay, absolutely, but I, I can't yeah. answer the question. Uh, yeah. You absolutely can examine all your traffic coming from the customer base, looking to see what resolvers they're using and so forth. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It would be yeah. simple for me to build a query to say, show me all the DNS traffic coming from my subscriber base and what, what IPs and what servers they're using and things like that. So it is important to note that this data come re really relies upon having a DNS feed from your 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 uh, customer uh, facing DNS resolvers. Kentic does use third parties as additional data sources. So we get data streams from, from third parties that provide this data, but it really, really is most accurate when you provide that additional uh, data stream to us, um, which takes us to the next logical step when understanding this type of data. So, so having a base foundational layer of, of A, your infrastructure to understand peers, IXs, transit providers, all that fun stuff in the BGP layer and all that. Uh, the, build, the next foundational layer, which is understanding how content delivery is getting sent to me, uh, which content delivery networks uh, are, are, are physically plumbing the traffic to me. But the next logical question on top of that we get from our customers is, well, okay, it's good to know that Akamai is doing the X, Y, and Z, but what services are they actually delivering to me? And that's where uh, Kentic OTT service tracking comes into play. And this, this is where that uh, DNS feed really comes into play quite a bit. So what we've done basically is built a, a backend algorithm that uh, uses a number of different data sources, uh, but really foundationally uses that DNS telemetry feed to give you effectively three layers of information First, it gives uh, a service category, right? So, you know, video, social media, gaming, what, what have you, storage, web, and so forth. Um, it then gives you services like, you know, Facebook video and Netflix and things like that. But then we have this middle layer aggregation called a provider. So in the case of like some of these larger providers that they're, they're kind of crossovers between CDNs and services, but a company like Facebook here might have a number of different services that they offer. So we can we can tell you of the Facebook, you know, maybe you have caches from Facebook, maybe you have interconnects from Facebook, but here are the individual services that they're providing to you that, from their own brand. And, and you can see down into the individual service layer itself. So it, it's very handy. And I'll give you an example um, of how this comes into play in some in a real world. Previous to Kentic, I said I spent uh, 25 years or so running backbones and 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 working for a very large cable company uh, uh, for a number of years. Um, you know, common scenario was Monday morning, you'd come in and, and some VP would be like, hey, there was a big event over the weekend. What happened? We got lots of phone calls. Um, oh, I, there was a new, uh, you know, Fortnite release, or there was a new, 
you know, World of Warcraft back then, I think it was probably the big one at the time. And and you could, and it was really difficult for the, the backbone engineering team to understand that because we had, like I was saying before, such a network centered view of ports and routers and ASNs and things like that. We had no ability to see the service layer, right? So adding that DNS layer really uh, is super helpful to give you that breakdown, that additional layer. So now I can come in Monday morning and go, oh yeah, look, gaming had a huge spike over the weekend or in this case, maybe it was software updates came and, you know, had a huge update. So I could, I could reliably give the VP a quick answer of big, big gaming update over the weekend. So he can go into his exec level meeting and keep, uh, you know, keep the exec team happy while, you know, making it look like we actually know what we're doing, <laughs> which is always a challenge. Right. So if, if we have a uh, question, here. Just yeah. to that. so, so you have, you know, listed, especially like under Facebook, there the different Facebook applications, uh, yep. like, you know, Instagram, Messenger, Oculus, all that stuff. Like these are the kind of things I typically, typically expect to see from like DPI. So how are we getting this information determined? I know NetFlow data, of course, has the ports and destinations, but like there, there obviously has to be some inference happening on the Kindic side. I know it's yeah. secret sauce, but it like is. how configurable, <laughs> yeah, how configurable is that? Like, is it only going to work for like really big applications like Facebook? What about more niche stuff or in-house stuff that I might write myself? Well, it is absolutely secret sauce, um, and it, it's it's uh, an area that we spend a lot of bit, a lot of time. Some things we can look at, you know, protocols that are being used. Sometimes it's you know name patterns and the DNS. Sometimes it's it's a combination of name and some BGP information. So it, it is kind of like this big overarching backend black box that we have that uh, is is definitely our secret sauce. But it's it's an area that we are constantly refining constantly feeding, adding additional data sources, constantly reclassifying traffic. So it's uh, it's definitely uh, something that keeps us very busy. Yeah, one of the main reasons I ask is because like, you know, from like the network I work on, from our perspective, a lot of our stuff is like scientific network flows, right? That sure. isn't even something public to the world or maybe it's within a layer three VPN, but we still want to report on some of that, some if of those breakdowns. So I'd give DNS from your own internal infrastructure we can still do that flow correlation think about the kentic ingest layer we already have to have we're not talking about it today we already have every bgp session in your network in our ingest because we'll look up where the flow is going by following the bgp routing table so think about a big set of patricia trees the ingest and now add dns to that with a ttl so if you send us a feed of dns whether it's from internal dns in a data center or public DNS to get to the internet, we'll just look at who queried what, and if that querier goes to one of the A records, or quad A if you love V6, then, um, then it will uh, associate that. Now, we do some work that you won't get, like that'll be, the site will be in there, but we don't, like we have an opinion about what Facebook apps are and what Apple properties are, and so, but we also have some things we can talk about called custom dimensions, that allow you to, to do that sync, as I said, sync with NetBots and CMDBs. So you can come at it from a couple different angles, but every enterprise and larger service providers are absolutely enterprises have this problem of what applications are what, you know, inside the network, so. And I assume this OTT service tracking can be pointed at different places in the network. So I don't have to point it only at my core areas or the, the large aggregations, but I could, point this at a particular customer service and be reporting to them, this is what you're using yeah. over the top as well. Yeah, absolutely. The interface that I'm showing you here on the screen is the sort of the nice, pretty overall interface, sort of like the, we would call that the manager view, but you have full access into the, the gory backend details with our data explorer. So you could absolutely craft custom queries send them out share and share that with your customer or even give them a, a their own portalized view of that data as well for sure yeah that's the follow-up there's a there's obviously an api there so i can pop absolutely it the customer portal and yeah if the pretty pictures that get those off my back yeah yeah absolutely so just to give you a few more wrap-up points here you know uh, we haven't even gotten to the point of, of talking about drilling down into the individual services so now this is where it gets really kind of interesting because uh, like I said, from 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 the historical perspective, having sort of that network centric view, I could probably do some 
lookups on, you know, where Disney Plus is and, and try to correlate, you know, that to an autonomous system number. But, you know, the DNS lookups I do might get different answers from where I am in the world for where somebody on the West Coast is because that's how CDNs work, right? Um, so being able to tie it to the infrastructure gets really interesting because, you know, in, in, in previous, we, we had no idea where the services are coming from. So this first screen here just gives us, you know, very high level information about rankings in terms of where the services are in terms of ranking, things like that, which isn't necessarily the most important thing. What I care about as an engineer working in the backbone team is to understand where the traffic's actually coming from. So this is a service, this is a construct that's entirely effectively in DNS, but I need to tie it to the infrastructure. For step one uh, is like understanding what CDN is delivering it to me. And I, and I'm, purposely chose Disney Plus because when Disney Plus launched, uh, what is it, you know, two and a half years ago now, or, or, or maybe more, I forget, um, they didn't announce publicly what, what CDNs that they were planning on using. They told every CDN they were using them. So what happened was to our service provider customers is that every single CDN came to them and said, look, we need to quadruple our capacity with you because Disney is going to use us to, to send traffic to your network. And the, that created a logistical problem for the, the service providers because they can't give everybody quadruple the capacity. That's very cap, obviously very capital intensive, right? So what those Kentic customers who are, who are service providers were able to do on the launch day was immediately come in here because we had it all set and ready to go. They were able to come in here and say, aha, uh, it's actually only Lumen, Akamai, Fastly, and a tiny little bit of Edgecast and this example little fake network that we have here that are getting the traffic. So they were able to very quickly react to that information to then provide additional capacity to these other content delivery networks and then provide good service to their customers in the end. So having just a simple uh, chart that showed them you know, the, the content delivery networks as as virtual constructs, as, as, as an object became super, super powerful to them. But then also to be able to map it out, to look at things like, okay, for that content delivery network, um, how does that content delivery network get to me? Are they, are they connected to me directly? Or are they coming in through a transit provider? And if they are coming in through a transit provider, which transit provider? Because I have 12 of them, right? So understanding that path to say, okay, in this case, Lumen, whose source ASN is 3356 Lumen CDN, they are coming in through a provider that's labeled it as AT&T, and we, we identify that as transit, right? So now suddenly, it, so it opens up this, this amazing view to the infrastructure to understand this virtual DNS concept of a service that we know is Disney+. Plus it's tied to this real physical stuff on my network, right? And now I can also say, aha, um, okay, so they're delivering it to me over these transit ports, that's costing me money. So now I have a way to, now maybe I need to, at this point, you know, talk to Lumen about direct interconnects uh, as settlement free to deliver that traffic without me having to pay for it and so forth. So it's it's very important to have that level of, of understanding of, um, uh, how that physic service gets delivered to me. And it's also interesting to see that, like in this case of um, uh, Disney Plus, you know, it might, I might even have some coming off of embedded cache for one of these uh, CDNs on my network. So it, you can see a real mix in the real world when we look at our customers' networks, you can see a real world mix of these, these services getting delivered here, there, and everywhere. And it's really hard to troubleshoot when you're getting lots of phone calls saying, hey, why is Disney Plus performing so poorly? at least at this point, you now have a way to start looking at how that virtual construct ties to your physical network. Um, some other cool things that we're doing with this, um, because we have also such a, uh, we're so tied so closely to your physical infrastructure and have such a deep knowledge of that, we can start to do some interesting things like correlate this data. So specifically on a capacity view, what I can now do is to say, if there are underlying now, granted, no service providers have capacity issues. We know that does. We know that doesn't actually exist, right? <laughs> but if they did, or supply chain, supply chain delay issues. Yeah, supply chain. It's all supply chain, right? But now, what we can do is to say, look, if you do actually have um, an underlying capacity issue that's causing performance issues, I can now tell you what services it's actually affecting. So, if we look at you know Kentic as a service, right? Um, as an OTT service, I could see, you know, this is a this is a what they call a, a tree chart, I believe. And this basically represents each of the interfaces on my network that have 
traffic for this OTT service, right? So I can see there's a bunch bunch of them that are fine. Everything's good. Some that's, you know, maybe in the middle category. And then I clearly have some that are, are, are causing a problem. If I scroll down, I can see the individual routers that have traffic for that service. Drill down into the router and see, aha, okay, for this router, this one port for some reason is having a major issue. And I can keep drilling in and, and look at the you know the traffic for that individual service on that port and get things like you know the average bit rate for the subscribers number of subscribers and then look at the capacity on the port you know is it is it just happening for five minutes at peak or is it you know a day long problem or or, or is it uh, something else you know and give you sort of like a very detailed view of how that one port that that's hitting, you know, capacity limits, how it's affecting other services and so forth, which is extremely handy for the operations team to be able to say, hey, if we run this hot, this is what's going to be affected. Um, on that particular problem, suppose the ticket came in the other way that I know there's a customer in a particular location on the network that's complained about the problem. How do I more quickly get down to that detail level where I skip all this and go right to the router facing that customer? Um, well, you could do it a couple different ways. Uh, we have a global search. So if I knew the customer name, I could type in the customer's name in the global search and very quickly get to their individual interface uh, and drill right into that and get that same level of information about how much traffic's on that interface. And then when I'm in the interface, I now have that correlated to applications, BGP information, IPs, prefixes, and we can also customize that view to lots of other Type of right. so so we have the two pieces of information the application and the customer location we have to pick one or the other and drill in from there yep yeah so it, it, we really do take a big data approach to this so once you think about a column store database you can filter by any column you can group by any column so we can really uh you know make an interface that's very quick and easy for you to kind of get that answer very quickly talking a lot of about a lot of different things here and some of the secret sauce that you've talked about, it, it kind of blurs a border between facts and opinion. And I think um, Avi um, kind of referred to it a little bit. I think he, that's where he hit custom dimensions. Okay. Um, when you're putting these things together, is there a quick and easy way for me to tell what is coming from something that is pure fact and pure inf inferred fact or inferred opinion that you have and what might be my opinion pieces? Oh, Does in terms of be, sense? being able to override what Kentik thinks. To override is. what Kentik thinks and to know and to be able to sh show quickly, you know, to people that might look at a graph and infer that that is absolute fact and, you know, real data versus something that has been inferred. I just don't. Go ahead, Avi. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple dimensions here. We're really oh, ab absolutely. About, we're talking about, there are some things which we infer and we make clear our guess. Most of the things you're going to look at on a graph are enriched. Now, the data that we're enriching may be inaccurate, or it may be our map of the CDNs in the world, for example. That's a dimension. You know, that may be 2% inaccurate. But then again, we show IPGO, which is always inaccurate no matter what. Um, you know, BGP is updated within 30 seconds to the flow, but that's a little bit out of date. So these enrichments are not quite as much an analyst sitting around and doing an opinion as is the data that's coming in that's looked up in the table accurate and then yes customers can do overrides of some of this um but yeah i mean you can see you can click on data explorer in the graph and see what the dimensions are and then um we have in the knowledge base you know what the source of all the different dimensions is but there is a little bit less opinion maybe and question it's there's like a deterministic way that these things are joined which we share and then it's a question of is the join table accurate um, I think I'd re I think I'd pull back the word opinion and try and find something better, but that was okay, the one I yeah, shot I'll, in there I'll at the moment. Back over to Steve. So yeah, no, I'll, I'll say that you know, <laughs> uh, we we we're constantly refining the algorithm, of course, and if if customers have feedback, we absolutely would love to hear that. Um, and and you can even uh, use the uh, the give feedback button right in the interface, and that <laughs> those tickets get dropped right in our queue, and we can get the, uh, you know different uh, classifications added quickly too. So. So I think that's kind of Kentic, you know, Kentic OTT and CDN at a high level. Uh, I have one, one, sorry, one, yeah, no one other question here. Sure. Uh, suppose I've pointed this at a more narrow part of the network and there's um, undefined things that you don't know about. Uh, what does that look like? And what are my options for drilling into this stuff that, you know, I don't know what the hell it is. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we even have some predefined um, some some predefined uh, views that you can use to look at that undefined traffic. So if I uh, were go in here and sort of look at a predefined uh, you know services that are pen that aren't classified. So we even you know one of the things that can take one sort of core value that we have is that we we want to be as transparent as possible with all of this. So we tell you you know what percent classified we absolutely know what part we know the provider it's coming from but we're not sure about the exact service and so forth and we even give you the full list of all the things that we haven't quite figured out yet right but we know the dns query but we just haven't the algorithm hasn't quite figured it out yet so we we even make that available for you and because it's a view here in the database it's simple to say this is this is all of that for the entire network but i could easily you know filter that down to an individual individual customer ip AS path, whatever object in our database, we can filter that down to. Yeah, that's that's great because uh, yeah. a lot of what we like to report is on a customer basis, and obviously there's going to be a lot of low level stuff that's you know way way down from the top 500 sites on the internet. That's yeah, absolutely. That's and within the, there. with the with the Kentic Data Explorer, which is really kind of the super nerd interface. Um, you know, you can do any, you can get really fancy with that. Like break down the, all the traffic in your network by individual customers, drill into that one customer, see all of those customers' interfaces, pick one of those interfaces, then show all the OTT traffic for that interface. It really gives you, uh, you know, an unparalleled view into the ability to drill into that data. Uh, the, the What I've been showing you today is the, is the, the fancy, shiny, look at this fun, Pretty pictures part of it, but we'll we can we just as easily go super deep into the details as well. Not on a not on a, with the amount of time we have today, but uh, we can go deeper. Right. Yeah, that's definitely something that I've seen a lot of interest in from customers. Is uh, particularly when you're troubleshooting a problem with them. You know, being able to see the gory details of their traffic alone, isolated from the from the yeah. rest of the network. And then we can point to this thing, hey, what what is this thing here? That yeah, in, in addition to this, to this, Kentic also has a white label portal capability so that you can actually provide not this interface exactly, but a curated interface specifically for that individual customer too.